That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good freaking opening, man. Yeah, why well, that worked out really well that time. Usually you can barely hear it. That was awesome. Uh, where, where, where where are we at? What episode are we on? I'm, 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 already, I'm already lost. Let me look it up here. All right, 256. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode 256 of the Drunk Dinosaurs <laughs> podcast. I am your host, as always. I'm Tyler. And joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Well, Tyler, the beat goes on. That's just the theme of this week for me. It's like, no matter what type of bullshit that occurs or what type of things I gotta do, it's just the beat goes on. As the late Macho Man Randy Savage would say. But, uh... Dig it! Dude, as far as gaming stuff, I've done plenty. I have done my fair share. So... Bastard. Other than that, man, I'm doing pretty freaking good. So it's like, how have you been doing? You ever been, like... You ever had, like, poop really bad, but, like, you're so tired that pooping is too much work? Yep. Okay. I've been there quite a bit of times. And it's led to me, like, just like just randomly sleeping, and it's like, oh, my God, the rumbling in my stomach. I gotta run. <laughs> yeah. My my problem is, like, I don't like to poop at work. I really don't like to poop anywhere but my own bathroom. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's like, it's my, it, you know, it's like, outside of my bed, it's my favorite place to be. Yep. Uh and I don't want to, like, ruin that moment anywhere else. And at work, I don't really have time to poop. So that's why I don't eat at work. It's because then you have to poop. And then, you know, it's like, ugh. Yeah, I've, I've, I've debated like that as well. But at the same time, I get really fucking hungry when I'm at work. And so yeah. it's like, it usually leads to me, like, eating around my first break since I wake up so damn early. Yeah, so I, like, yeah. eat my lunch on my first break. And the people look at me. It's like, what the fuck are you doing eating your lunch at the first break? It's like, I'm fucking hungry, dude. I gotta yeah. eat some shit. I know a lot of people do that. Like, it's 8 in the morning, and they're eating in the salad. I'm like, really? Really? Okay. But the, the nice thing is about work, though, if you do get hungry, it's, like, the only place acceptable to eat a Three Musketeer bar at 8 o'clock in the morning. There you so, go. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I'm doing all right. Um, I've been in this, like, class at work for the last eight weeks. Class. Yeah. So, like, they, my manager signed me up for... Um, there's classes, it's for leadership and management training. Okay. Uh, so, um, it was like an eight week course. It was like every other Wednesday, five hours in this class. Um, and Wednesday was the final class and we had to come up with like a big project, which it was like being in school over again. There was like 21, 21 people in there. It's like four people from my company and then like a bunch of other companies in there. Yeah. And we all, at the, on the last week, we had to give a five minute presentation because we had to come up with like an innovation project for work. Okay. And I didn't realize this until like I got the class, but uh, I showed up and like we have I have like my my hoodie I it has like it's a nice like fleece hoodie that I never wear but it has the company logo on it I was always I was I just wore it to that class and that was it yeah and I show I show up to class I didn't realize this until I got there that like everybody invites like all of management to this so like what was supposed to be like I thought was just like our twenty people. It was like fifty people in this room, wow, and including my plant manager. Ooh, uh, so he sat next to me, and the night before I had some fish, and it wasn't sitting too well. You oh know, like no! That weird, you know when you, you hold in a fart and it makes that weird <laughs> noise in your stomach? <laughs> yes. So for four and a half hours, oh, no. <laughs> you just hear. <laughs> there she blows. Yeah, and I'm just like, I know we got to hear that. Oh, that, so no. that was so on top of it it's really hot in that room there's 50 people in there i'm not i'm like i'm wearing just like a regular like t-shirt everybody's like in suits and all the girls like dress up really nice like business attire like all these people are like salesmen that go out in the field and stuff like that so they have to dress snazzy yeah and all the managers and stuff that are there are all dressed up snazzy as well and i'm in this fleece hoodie and uh with the undershirt um that I'm just like I'm so it's hot. I'm sweating bullets because yep. I'm nervous as hell. Uh, I haven't done a presentation like this in like over a decade, and I got I got to poop really bad. <laughs> and I got my bought my plant manager is getting ready to watch me do my presentation. So, anyways, uh, I don't know how it went. I blacked out. I think you blacked um, out. <laughs> pretty sure I blacked out. I don't I don't remember anything about it. Uh, it was like there's like a five minute gap in my life. I'll never get back. Um. But yeah, that was that was my week. You just um, go through stuff there. It's like Shamu is baking inside the oven, and it's like, yeah. oh my god, yeah. 
<laughs> just go yeah. up there. It's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's it's just my phone. I, I listen. The, the the sound of whales just it calms my calms me down. <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, a was my week. It was oh pretty my fun. God. I'm glad it's over. Uh, no shit. Yeah, I'm busy enough as it is, and have to go away for five hours a week. Uh, it made it worse. But uh, yeah, that was that, that's pretty much going on with me. Uh, working, sleeping, and trying to poop. Um, but anyway, excuse me. Oh, I'm drinking spirit. It's St. Patty's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it freaking it, blanked yeah. my mind too. Yeah, I uh. I went to work today, and everybody was like wearing like green undershirts because we all have like our we all have like work clothes we gotta wear, uh, uniforms, and uh, everybody's wearing green undershirts. I'm like, why the fuck is everybody wearing green? <laughs> it took it legitimately took me until almost lunchtime to figure out everybody's wearing green, a uh, green green, why they're wearing green. I'm like, oh yeah, it's St. Patty's Day, which luckily for me, I was wearing green boxers, so totally <laughs> lucked out by mistake there. There you go. Uh, didn't get pinched, so. Um, yeah, but I'm, anyways, I'm drinking a beer. Uh, figured it's St. Patty's Day. I need to have at least a beer. So that's pretty good. First beer I've had in, well, other than the beer I had before the show. Uh, first beers I've had since last week when we recorded the show. Uh, so it's, it's nice. It's hitting the spot right now. Uh, but anyways, this is the uh, Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. Uh, we talk about video games. I don't yep. know why I'm doing the intro again, but I am. Uh, I'm all over the place right now. Um, but you know what, Gables? Yeah. We're gonna say the we're gonna say the what we've been playing for last. Cause, okay. Uh, I feel like we can we could probably run through this news fairly quickly. Um, not a whole lot going on. Uh, really. Well, there's there's some news, but nothing big really. Other than the fact that uh, speaking of big, uh, Xbox is saying that this E3 will be their biggest E3 ever. Hmm. Uh, they announced that actually there will be their E3 will take place uh, at the Microsoft Theater across the street from the LA Convention Center where the E3 is held. So, well, now that it's open to public, I guess um, they're going to just have it over there now. I think they always do the presentation, like the their EA conference or, or EA, E3 conference uh, at the Microsoft Theater. Um, but now they're just going to have a whole event there. Like they're going to have like their, their, their booths and everything will be there. Um, makes sense. It's a Microsoft Theater. Uh, but no really other news. They gave a date, which is just a normal, I think it's Monday morning, uh, where they always do their E3, but, uh, they're saying it's going to be the, so when it comes to the whole, like a Microsoft bigger presence, like their biggest E3 yet, I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all because when it of itself, you have the publishers doing their own separate things, you know, Sony with their own PlayStation experience, Nintendo with their own Nintendo direct stuff. I mean, it's a given that Microsoft wants to do what they want to do. So in terms of that E3 day, they got an individual day separate now from both Sony and Nintendo on Sunday. They got their own like Microsoft like conventional like place where they can do opposite, like say the E3, like the LA Convention Center that normally the big old game developers would have. It just gives them a lot of like room and also gives them a lot of space so the public can walk in, play some of the newest content that's going to be exclusive for their system. And speaking of exclusives, that's probably going to be the biggest thing they're going to have to showcase during that time where it's like, what's going to be the whole exclusive stuff they're going to be showing? I mean, is do they have a lot of space for Anthem? Do they got like a lot of space for a potential, like things we don't know about, like say like a Halo 6 or like uh, the new entry for Gears since it's been a few years now since Gears 4 has come out. So just sky's the limit really much for like uh, what Microsoft could potentially be trying to unveil. But at the same time, it's like, it just doesn't surprise me that uh, they're advertising it like it's their biggest E3 thing yet. I mean, it's the most pivotal thing yet. Yeah. Um, I still feel like, I mean, I agree with everything you pretty much said there. Like, uh, separating from E3 seems like kind of a smart move, especially, I don't know if it's like they own that theater or if it's just their name on it. But regardless, it's probably cheaper to have their own area and keep it right there by E3, just like what EA did last year when they separated. The, they're still part of E3, um, but they're in their own separate area, having their own little event. Um, in you know, during E3, uh, I, I feel like this might become like a more normal, normal thing where maybe that it's just... E, E3, that sort of thing is never going to go away because for the most part, it sounds like like that's where like all pretty much where everybody converges to in the gaming industry, uh, not just like for journalists, but for also for like the big wigs of the companies 
that's how Mario plus Rabbids got made. Was Ubisoft talking to Mio, uh, Miyamoto uh, at um, at E3 like four years ago? Yeah. Uh, so that's how big things happen. So it it's kind of crazy how it's, I mean it, the last few years how big things have changed and you know what E3 is doing. But looking at Xbox's standpoint, Microsoft's standpoint, um, I feel like. Like we don't know anything. We don't know when Crackdown Three is coming. I feel like right. that's going. They said early 2018. I think that I think it's going to be a fall game now. It seems like or a late summer game. Most likely. Uh, um, because I mean we don't know anything about. I mean obviously we still have E3, but I don't think like I don't see a Halo or a Gears coming out this year. But I definitely could see them announcing them this year. Um, they get them out there because like I said, it's been I think four years since Halo Five came out, or th- I think 2000. 14 or 15 and uh gears of war 4 came out in 2016 so i mean i can definitely we can definitely see i i, I couldn't I wouldn't be surprised if you get like a gears 5 teaser and then we get some gameplay for uh halo 6 and halo 6 coming out next november and then gears is like a 2020 game yeah um but yeah i feel like they need to just kind of do th- really the nintendo formula um for it's not, not really a formula but like they've been fucking guns blazing for the last fifteen months. Right now, ever just releasing everything, and I mean, they've got some a lot of help with the Wii U, where no one really played it. So they have all these great games that no one really ever played. They can bring back now. Uh, Microsoft doesn't really have that. They have a lot of great games, but I mean, they're all out there with the backwards compatibility stuff. Um, so yeah, like, and they don't have that huge library of it. first first party exclusives, but. I think they need to either uh, get some, like make some, or buy some, or like the ones they do have uh, banked right now. Show them, like get people hyped. You got this. You got this Xbox One X that seems like it's selling really well, but obviously it could be doing better. It's still getting smoked by the PlayStation, and uh, n- there's talks that uh, Nintendo very well could uh, surpass the Xbox One uh, within the next like 18 months. Uh, oh, yeah. is what, on the pace that they're on that they'll actually surpass it like we don't have numbers for xbox one sales because they stopped giving them but they have people have kind of figured out uh where they it sounds like it's around the 30 million mark um maybe a little over with the xbox one x uh and i think last time we heard about nintendo last quarter it was like over 13 million in less than a year so i mean if it keeps that pace and they keep going guns blazing with what the games they have coming out uh, especially if Pokemon comes out later this year, I mean they can easily hit hit 24 years over, um, and be within spitting distance of Xbox. So they need to like, they can't just hold ground anymore. They need to like go like balls out with what they got, and just show everything. I don't feel like they're they're in the business of uh, hiding things or waiting on things. Like I think we just need it all out there. Show us everything you got. Like they're not in that position anymore. Now they are very well for the first time ever looking at being a distant third place in this console, this, this console war, uh, since they've really, they joined in. Yes. Um, that's definitely uncharted territory for Microsoft. I mean, you are right. In a certain extent, they got to show their entire hand. It feels like, because they need to try to be aggressive in terms of what they advertise, what exactly that they're going to present They've done good strides this year with doing things like the Game Pass, having like certain releases like available for people for ten dollars a month, and they've released that Xbox One X, which is their strongest console yet. However, what is keeping people from investing inside that console not only is the price, but it's always, but it's also the first-party type of content that they can have available at the time. Sony is flat out beating them in terms of. Not only the potential sales, not only people are using that online service, PlayStation Network, over Xbox Live and stuff, but it's also because of like the incentives that they can, that people can go through on the PS4, play quality first-party experiences, enjoy stuff. All their friends are there. They can play games like Overwatch. They can play games like Battlefield, Call of Duty, and stuff. Destiny, because they feel like that's the console that is basically on top. You know, it's sort of like mm-hmm. similar to last generation, how Microsoft was so keen with everybody on Xbox Live, with the 360, with all the exclusives that they had at the point, where Sony was like a distant second, pretty much, in that regard. But in this case and scenario, 
yeah, I agree with you, man. It's like they got to be aggressive. Microsoft's got to be aggressive with this thing come E3 time because it's like yeah. they will be a distant third. That's just a fact in my honest opinion because Nintendo with a Switch, it's been hot. Over a year, they've had so many of their games like one, two, three punches and stuff. They've got all these ports and stuff that they had for the Wii U all of a sudden just coming on the Switch and people are buying them up like hotcakes because they did not buy them the first time around when it was on the Wii U. That system only yeah. sold 13 million units. This console's on pace, like you said before, almost 20 million in a span of possibly by the end of this year. It's yeah. crazy. But there's so much good stuff on the Switch that's so much more appealing right now than, it's, say, going to an Xbox One X. Yeah. I mean, and even like you said, the ports, like, I'm, like, the like one of the most hyped games for me this year is Captain Toad, which... It's just a report, and I played the shit out of that game oh, yeah. when it came out the first time. So, I mean, it's not just people that missed the Wii U. It's people that played on the Wii U, and now they're like, there's this whole, like, you're, you're feeling like, it's like, like, now you feel like you're a part of something right now. It's like, we've been around, we we, we, we stuck through, like, the drudges of all of the Wii U. Yep. Uh, I joined in, you know, midway, so I haven't been there the whole time. Uh, but in the, the latter part of the Wii, and uh, it's like, now everybody's like, Oh my god, like there's all these great games coming. Like you're like, Yes, yes, there is. You guys can play them now. You know, so it's 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 exciting, you know, and like going back to Xbox though, it's like it's something I said when they announced the games pass, like adding all like all the first party exclusive games will be a part of that for ten bucks a month. They've done the most consumer friendly stuff out of anybody, um, of any of the other uh console makers yes. on the last two, three years. But it, it it comes down to, and we find this, we always talk about whenever the new consoles come out is, what kind of what kind of specs does it got? What's in the box? Like what 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 can it do? What's all these cool things? But it always comes down to games. Every time you look at it, like N- Nintendo's killing it right now with games, uh, and that's what's making. I mean, that's a big part of the like they have a cool gimmick with the with the hybrid stuff to it. That's awesome. I think that's a huge part of the success. But but if it didn't have the games, no one would care. Um, it's the same thing with with PlayStation Four. Like, like there's really no major difference between the PS4 and the Xbox One. Like, honestly, if you put them compared the two, and you look at like if you took the games out of it, I would um, I'd argue that the Xbox One is probably better, uh, just with the Games Pass and everything like that, and the backwards compatibility and everything. Uh, but the games are what's going. That's what makes the difference in in every generation, and we find that out. Like in like I'm guilty of it just as much as anybody else. When the Switch was announced, we're like, like I want it to be like almost as powerful as a PS4. I want I want this. I want that. When it came down to it, it's like I just want great games. It's like once we get the thing, and we like, there's things that I have gripes with with the Switch, and there's things I have gripes with the other consoles. But if, as long as it has great games, people will come. And um, that's the thing we we always everybody talks about. And we all talk about every time Xbox One is brought up is games. Uh, they have one. Or, they might have one or two here or there. You know, they like Cuphead last year. You know, but I mean that game sold a couple million copies. That was their, probably their biggest first part exclusive last year. Probably their only. Yep. Um, when like the the PlayStation Four had eight or nine first part exclusive games sell two million plus copies. Uh, like near Automata sold two and a half million copies, and that wasn't even exclusive. exclusive. You know, that yeah. wasn't really yeah. exclusive. It was on PC as well, but still. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cuphead was also on PC, but true. Um, but as far as consoles go, you know, and that was like probably their sixth or seventh most like biggest uh, first first part exclusive game, and it probably outsold the biggest first part exclusive that Xbox had. Same with the Switch, probably. Uh, I, I would bet there's probably five or six games that are only on the Switch that outsold anything on the Xbox. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to like trash the Xbox here, but it's like I, I we want Xbox to do well when Xbox does well or when all of them are doing well. It's it's be- it's what's best for us. So, uh, but um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh, something else here. Uh, so this kind of came out kind of out of nowhere, really. Uh, Amazon Italy accidentally posted this. It was just a, a kind of a, a kind of a I don't know what they call it, but basically, anyways, sorry they uh, they posted uh, a, a link for Modern Warfare Two Remastered. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming apparently on the release date for it is April thirtieth, which I think it's just a placeholder uh, because I looked it up. April thirtieth is a Monday. Um, oh yeah, speaking of the uh, 
the micro you were right the the microsoft xbox press conference is on a sunday okay uh sunday morning um but anyways going back to model for two uh so amazon italy posted it uh the price is 25 dollars us which um i also looked up the modern warfare remaster when it came out separately that yep. was 40 dollars. so uh i don't uh i don't necessarily i i, I definitely kind of believe that modern warfare 2 is happening the remaster anyways but i don't i think the dates are placed older now like the price is right uh, what about you, Cables? Well, anyway, for the Modern Warfare 2 stuff, to be perfectly honest and stuff, I don't doubt that it's probably going to be coming out pretty soon. I mean, it's kind of interesting to see the price and, like, the whole placeholder thing for, like, uh, you know, for the whole release date, which is kind of soon <laughs> in comparison to what we may have, would have expected. I mean, possibly, like, maybe towards maybe a summer release or something like that, but towards the spring, that's kind of soon. But, uh... As far as whether yeah. or not I would actually go ahead and pick up something like that, I absolutely don't fucking care. <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest, man. It's like oh. the old Call of Duty games and stuff. I never really had much of like a, uh, never really had much of like a thing for them. I mean, I played through World at War, played through Black Ops and stuff, but uh, I had my fun. Played a little bit of Nazi zombies and stuff, but it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I'm actually, I don't know, like. I, I, I think we were talking about it uh, a couple months ago when Justin was here. We were talking about when we hyped ourselves up for Black Ops. And, like, what if they did, like, a Black Ops remastered with, with the Black Ops 4? And, uh, like, that sounds awesome. Like, I would totally buy that. And I'm if they give us Modern Warfare 2 this year instead, if that is a thing, it'd be kind of kind of weird because, you know, it's it's a different company. It's not it's Treyarch making Black Ops. Um, so... It's a different, the different guys making it, but uh, or the, it's a different one of their games. Um, but it's probably still War, Modern Warfare Two is probably still like the most popular one. It's up there with the first Modern Warfare and Black Ops as far as popularity goes. But it's the whole, it's the whole no Russian level that's pretty much got its notoriety and stuff like there. So it's like yeah, and then the the uh, what's that? The there was like the the fight in the fast food restaurant. I mean that that game was awesome, but. I remember being really excited when they announced the first Call of Duty 4 remaster. And I'm like, I'm going to buy that one as soon as it comes out. And then it's like, it came and then it was like, oh, it's in, you got to buy the, the $100 edition or the $80 edition to get it. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll wait. And then I got the code and I was able to play it because um, my when my sister pre-ordered it, they gave me a code and her a code from GameStop. Uh-huh. And I was able to play it and I was just like, cool. And then, uh, I had, but I was only able to play it for 30 days and then like, I went away. And, right. um, I was like, I played the first two levels and I was like, ah, that was cool. I never went back to it. And then it came out, um, I was able to buy it when it came out uh, separately. And I was like, ah, it's 40 bucks. When it goes on sale, I'll pick it up. Just two weeks ago, it was on sale for 20 bucks. I'm like, ah, I'm good. So I, I'm, I don't want to sit there and say like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to pick this up. Like I, I'm excited for it now. Uh, but I think it's going to be a different situation if and when yeah. this happens. Um, I do think the April 30th thing is bullshit. I, I, if it does come out, I feel like it's, it's going to be a bundle thing again. I hope they don't because they had a lot of backlash for it, but it worked out because Infinite Warfare sold super well, and it seems like a lot of people bought it to get the... Uh, um, a lot of people bought the $80 edition to get um, Modern Warfare Remastered. So um, I feel like they'll deal with the backlash because it's still Call of Duty. It's still going to sell super well. People are going to get they're going to get the extra 20 bucks or so out of them if they do do it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it I'm, it's cool to bring it back. I'm not going to knock it because we just talked about Nintendo's bringing up back all these ports and yeah. we're buying them. Like, I'm buying Hyrule Warriors next month or two months and Captain Toad. Oh. So, I'm not going to knock it. I just it. bought a port uh, today. But, so, it's like. <laughs> yes, I bought one. I technically bought like two months ago, but I just I just played a port today. Um, we'll get to that. That's a segue for later. Uh, but speaking of Nintendo, uh, not really a lot to say here. But Nintendo announced uh, GDCs next week, uh, and I think this is the third year in a row now they're going to do a Nintendo's Nindies event on March 20th, which I believe is Tuesday. Yes, yes Tuesday. Um, Tuesday morning. Uh, it's going. They're usually like not super long, like 20, 30 minutes, and they just show off a bunch of uh, indie titles that they call Nindies. Um, and there's going to say it's like a it's like a direct, but just in, uh, independent games, uh, which uh, I was reading about the last one. They did one last summer as well. And like the Super Meat Boy was announced there. Um, what the fuck are the? There's a couple other big games that were announced there. Oh, uh, Golf Story yep. was announced at that one. Uh, so some I mean, good some stuff that was announced. Yeah, as far as like, I mean, this is nothing that's gonna make 
you know headline news but as far as uh oh tr- um, no more heroes was was shown off there for the first time last year so yeah you're not gonna see any like th- this isn't like anything big that's gonna be front page news but uh, a lot of cool stuff that kind of fills in the gaps of uh, the uh, the release the release windows for uh the, the release calendar for the year uh, are shown off of these so I am I'm definitely excited because I'm I'm excited to see what uh what comes out of this. Like, we're gonna see more about the new Super, Super Mo- uh, Meat Boy game. Like, I, I'm like I think Limbo just came to the Switch or is coming to the Switch, so maybe we get inside for huh. the Switch. Uh, I don't know. I'm just I don't really. I mean, I think we're gonna see some weird oddball shit that we're like no one's gonna really care about, or it's just weird games. But I think there's uh, there's usually a couple gems. Like uh, Runbo was announced at this. Not surprised. Uh, uh, what was that Lucha Guacamelee game? The Guacamelee was shown there like a few years ago, um, so some good stuff comes out of this. So, I mean, I'm excited for it. What about you, Gables? Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for it because we don't know what's going to be unveiled with that Nindy's NK like <laughs> showcase and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. hell, like getting like some sort of mainstay stuff. I mean, I would love if say like a Super Giants game like uh, made it onto the Switch. You know, like say a Pyre or a Bastion or Transistor, that would be pretty freaking cool. Transistor and Bastion are fantastic games. I should just come over to. The... I think Transistor and Pyre are PS4 exclusives. Yeah, so. I know, I know. But, but Bastion is still just the thought of it. Yeah, yeah, no, true. Um, did you did you hear about the 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 studio that made the Blossom Tales game? No, actually, I didn't. So Blossom Tales is a game that came out a couple months ago, and I think I was talk. I talked. I think I talked about it back then, but it was like basically like a link to the past, uh, kind of like not. I don't want to say a rip off, but it basically is just. It looks like a link to the past game, but made in 2017, and it apparently like dogs are barking in the background. Sorry guys. Uh, oh, now now my dog's gonna bark in the background. Um, they're all going there. Okay, they're really excited, uh, but. Uh, anyways, Blossom Tales. Um, so the, the company, like it came out on PC and it sounded like it didn't do super well. So they put it on, uh, it came out to the Switch. I think it was at the end of the last year or the beginning of this year. And uh, they said it sold 20 times better on the Switch and it saved the company. Wow. And now they get to keep making, they were, the, were going to have to close shop uh, if, if, it didn't be, if it didn't be successful or wasn't successful on the Switch. And now the, the company is not only um surviving it's thriving nice uh and i think if you're being showcased and this game wasn't even showing up in nindies it was just kind of came out uh so i think if you are if you get put on this event like that it's like that's your willy wonka golden ticket to success uh the switch i mean is like we said a couple like a month last month or so um like it replaced the vita as far as like these uh really cool obscure uh indie games like celeste and stuff like that yeah so uh, yeah i'm definitely excited for it it's cool to see like you know I, I, we'll talk about more next week i'm sure some cool stuff's gonna come out of it. but uh moving on to uh speaking of games that sold really well on the switch sonic mania uh, sonic mania came out uh was i think like last august uh sold super duper well um it was like a it was like it was like a 20 30 downloadable yeah. title uh they're bringing it back again this summer uh, it's called Sonic Mania Plus. Uh, it's gonna be like a, it actually will be a, a, like a physical. I don't know if it's like a digital code or not, but it's gonna have a, but you can buy an actual box for it now. Uh, and with this, they're gonna add uh, a four-player co-op mode, and also an encore mode. No idea what the encore mode is. There was no details on it. Uh, excuse me. And I also added two playable characters for the game: Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel. I feel like they just made those up, but apparently they've been around since 1993. Yeah, they have. They're part of Knuckles Chaotix. This is this is dumb. This, <laughs> okay. Like, I saw a picture of them. Like those are those are that's fake news. That's that's not real. Those aren't real things. Uh, no, we're but just they are part of Knuckles Chaotix. You know, that's just. <laughs> It's just crazy mm-hmm. just to think that's like so niche those characters and stuff. Mighty the armadillo. Yep. Ray the flying squirrel. <laughs> that's the best thing come with uh, come up with. I, I know, know it was right? the '90s, but come on, bro. Okay. <laughs> and then there's also a, a Sega Genesis reversal cover, which is actually the coolest thing I think about it. Cause yeah, it is. Man. Something, but yeah. The uh, the cover of it looks really sweet. It looks like a Sega Genesis cover, but it's uh, for Sonic Mania. Um, man, those oh, man, the Sega Genesis 
uh, boxes back then were pretty sweet. I still I still picture the Streets of Rage one when I had that one when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, is this? There's no price or any de- really other details other than the summer and then what I just gave you. But uh, would you be willing to pick up Sonic Mania again to get this? Oh my gosh, man, that's a good question. You know, for the physical form and stuff and like some of the added modes, I gotta see what the added modes are in general. But just the thought and the appeal of like a uh, Sonic Mania game in physical form, like maybe for the Switch or for whatsoever, you know, it, it sounds tempting. I'm not going to lie, it does sound tempting, though, but uh, maybe it was like a, maybe a 20 or $30 game, you know? Not like a full $60 retail, because I've already played through that game once. Good, Great game, but so much, like, a little stuff. i got to see more of the extra content, pretty much. Yeah, I'm curious what the Encore mode is. It's like a New Game Plus type of thing or not, but uh, I don't know. That's cool. I mean, not, not my bag, you know, like what I've talked about many times before. Um, but, yeah, that's cool that they're bringing it back. I kind of... It'd be kind of cool if they release like the extra stuff, like you know, five bucks or something. Download you can just buy it for like five or ten bucks, or like a free update even would be even better. But um, hopefully, they don't make like guys like you that bought it when it first came out that made it successful and make you guys pay. I kind of again wish, for it. I kind of wish they had like a discount or something like that for the ones that bought Sonic Mania originally. Yeah. Then like just have the code or something like that, or had like the DLC for Sonic Mania. You know, that'd be nice. Yeah, I no, no, they should do that. It'd be kind of crappy. Because you know, like you guys are the ones that make success, I uh, feel like they're double dipping on you guys by doing that. They do do that. Yep. Uh, so hopefully they they don't do that. That'd be really crappy. But it's you know it's a business. So, uh, but moving on to the thing I'm probably the most excited about this week. Uh, so the new Tomb Raider movie came out. It's getting um, mediocre reviews, I guess. It's actually like for a video game mo- uh, movie, it's doing extremely well review wise. Uh, nice. But, Reviews overall are kind of middle of the road, which, you know, for a video game movie, that's that's good. Um, the bar is not super high. Uh, it's Mortal Kombat is like the peak, and then like any U Bowl movie U-Bay is probably Bowl. the bottom. U Bay Bowl, whatever that guy's <laughs> name is, it doesn't matter. Um, neither does the movies. But, anyways, uh, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider has been something that has like it leaked like a couple years ago. Like, like someone was on like on a on a subway or a train or something like that, and they were working on like a uh, uh, like a uh, presentation, and somebody like took a snapshot of it or like saw the person on the laptop working on it, and that's how like the rumor came out, like the name and everything, and like that was like two thousand. I want to say that was like two thousand and fifteen or sixteen when that happened. And we don't really have anything about it. Then there was that tweet a couple months ago from the Tomb Raider um, Twitter page. And it was like a really weirdly worded uh, tweet. But like the beginning of each sentence, the first letter of each sentence spelled out shadow. Um, and now there was a, uh, I don't know if it was like before the movie, but in some countries uh, there was a like a little teaser trailer. It was like 15 second teaser trailer. And it was actually Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, so it's officially been announced. Um it sort of it got leaked before that, and then I think they kind of just came out. It's kind of like the Division Two thing, like last week, where it got leaked, so they just kind of came out. Yeah, it's coming. So they showed that they showed that officially came out that little teaser. Uh, the reveal is gonna be on April twenty seventh, and the game will come out on September fourteenth. Um, personally, uh, like I said, super excited for this game. Uh, I loved Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I absolutely adored the first game, uh, just Tomb Raider. I beat that one twice. I played. I beat Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I bought an Xbox One to play Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, and then I played it again at the end. Of the, at the end of last year, I played the majority of that game again. A bunch of the DLC stuff. I just kind of like those games so much. So, um, it's supposed to be the finale of the trilogy of uh, Laura Croft, which is kind of a bummer. But I feel like that's not going to go away. But I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I'm like we don't really have anything to go off of right now. But it looks like you're, like you're gonna be in like uh, there's like a, uh, a pyramid. It seems like you're in a jungle though, so I'm wondering if it's like a, like you're in Mexico or something. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, it's gonna be pretty sweet, I think. I'm really excited for it. Can't wait to see more from it. Uh, Gables, where are you? Have you played any of them? Honestly, it's been on my list of things like I need to get back to. You know, it's like I've never actually played any of the rebooted like Tomb Raider stuff. But from what I hear, it's um, these games are pretty amazing. So it's like. The best Tomb Raider trilogy of games and stuff like that, I really do need to get on, you know, in terms of, like, wanting to play. I mean, the last game of the freaking trilogy is probably going to be releasing this year, so it's like, hey, why not, you know? It's like, it's 
they're all going to be on the PS4, so it's like, hey, might as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're both on the PS4 now, so they're fine. You, you can find them both for under 20 bucks, so definitely get on that. But um, that's pretty much it for the news. Like I said, nothing really big this week. A lot of uh, little things, uh, but still some pretty exciting things. Uh, but moving on to uh, Gables, it's it's we're in mid-March. Uh, games are coming out. Everybody's trying to get their stuff out before the end of the fiscal year. Um, so we've been playing some games. We've been buying some games. Uh, I bought uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered. That was a port that we were that you were mentioning earlier. Uh, I also bought Resident Evil Revelations. It was like ten bucks on the really? PlayStation Store. So I played that game on the uh, Xbox 360 a while back. But no, speaking of, but it was kind of crazy actually. I just thought of this now um, with Resident Evil Revelations. Uh, I reviewed that game on our very first episode. Yeah, you did. Uh, I actually reviewed that game three times because there was the there was the beta one that Jake uh, Jake and I did. Yep. There was the one that we did that never got recorded. Yep. And then there was the actual one that got released. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It was it was like ten bucks. I'm like, I really like that game. I was like, I, I was just thinking about that actually a couple months ago. I'm like, I'd like to uh, play that again. And I just happened to see it was a, it was like a Capcom sale on PlayStation this week. So ten bucks, my like, hell yeah. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations on there for ten bucks as well. Eh, you, know, you don't have to do that. First episode's free. It's episodic. It, it's not that good, but the first one, it's awesome. Um, but um, anyways, games that new games that we've been playing. Uh, Gables, you've been playing some new games. Tell us about them. All right, so today I actually picked up a couple of new games for uh, for play and stuff, and I've had a chance to play at least around close to about half an hour to an hour of each of them. The first one is Kirby Star Allies from Nintendo Switch. Nice. I've played through a couple of stages of the game, and so far so good. You know, the gameplay is typical Kirby game, where it's like it's a platformer, there's a bunch of like hidden elements inside the levels and stuff, but the main hitch of this one so far is you have the ability to create these little hearts and stuff like that and throw them at specific enemies and that have like elemental abilities and this and that and they become your friends so you can have like quintessentially a four player sort of like uh, co-op thing you know three of the four being controlled by like computer players and stuff I have not tried any type of uh, multiplayer type of uh, co-op stuff with it yet but this is totally the type of game where you can get like three other friends and stuff play on the Switch maybe like through their own Joy-Cons, through their own, like, thing on the TV screen or something. It definitely has the feel of a interesting concept and stuff. It has the feel also that the game is not going to be as, like, bad in terms of, uh, in terms of, like, say, replayability, because at the, the first couple levels that I've been doing and stuff, it's sort of like an introductory sort of thing of, like, the Kirby game stuff like they, like Nintendo generally does with each new Kirby game. It's like, oh, okay, this is how you inhale an enemy. This is how you copy its ability. This is how you do this and that. But uh, what I've noticed from the short time I've played is the AI, CP, like, the computer players and stuff like that, they're actually kind of decent in terms of uh, following through what they have to do in solving puzzles. Like, there are specific stages where you can actually go through, you can hang from uh, these little switches and stuff, and uh, you don't have to wait for them just to, like, uh, go through and just follow suit. They just go through, they start automatically do it on their own, which you get onto one of the little switches and stuff. So that in and of itself is kind of a fresh take, you know? Because when is the last time you could say that a CPU, like, uh, ally or something was behaving competently (laughs) in terms of a game? Uncharted. That's probably the first and only example of that. Man, I can tell you what, man. I've had nightmares about, like, uh, playing Halo Reach and, like, the freaking computer AI driver just driving me along the freaking circles while I'm just on the oh, fucking... Yeah. Just, no, no, yeah. literally driving me around in circles while I'm going through on the turret trying to shoot down all the Covenant. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, Kirby Star Allies and stuff like that, the game looks so good in terms of on the... the the whole portal mode for Switch, it looks crisp. It looks really, like, uh, colorful in terms of, like, the screen textures and in terms of, like, the, you know, the actual look, the aesthetic. Frame rate stuff is pretty good. It's pretty consistent and stuff. I mean, it's, I, from what I can tell, it looks like it's running at a good solid, like, 30 frames per second, which, that's pretty smooth in mm-hmm. terms of, like, the texture stuff. But uh, gameplay-wise... Gameplay wise is pretty good. You know, it's not that difficult to pick up and play and stuff. I could easily probably give it to like uh, have somebody who's not like inclined like playing games all that much and stuff, and they can have a good time with it. So it's definitely I feel like a good game so far. 
I mean, from what I've played through, I've liked it, and I'll probably go back to it a little bit later. But uh, there is another game that I have been... Uh, well, actually, before I do that and stuff, I'll save the the other new game and stuff for, like, uh, last and stuff, because there is another game that I had been playing and stuff, which I started earlier on last week. So last Sunday, I decided to go through and start a little... I start a new thing in terms of a playthrough for Pokemon games. So it's entitled, like, uh, The Poke Warriors Way, which is just something that I just started thinking about one night and right after we got done recording, and it's like, you know what? I like the Pokemon games, and I kind of want to go through and kind of have a theme when I play through some of them. So I started with Pokemon Blue. I restarted my game on the 3DS, and I chose the Squirtle, and I gave it, like, a little nickname. I gave it the nickname The Cure. So, it sort of, like, evolved itself into <laughs> a little bit of, like, little reminiscence from, like, the past of, like, uh, the games that I had been playing. Like, uh, I'll tell you this right now. The entire theme of the, the party names and stuff for Pokemon Blue, my playthrough had to resolve around Metal Gear Solid 3. I mean, yes. that in of itself, when I started thinking of names, it's like, okay, I gotta have some cool names right here. So I capture a Spearow during my playthrough early on in the game. I give him the nickname The Pain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I go through a little bit later and I get myself an Eevee. I evolve that Eevee into a Jolteon and I give it the nickname The Fury. That's a good one. That's good. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So I go through Cerulean, like the Cerulean City and stuff. I go and I encounter an Abra. I capture it with the first Pokeball that I got, you know, because that damn thing can use teleport and get out of things. I give it the nickname the Sorrow. Hmm. Makes sense. Okay, now when I go through, I had to get a couple other Pokemon and stuff like that in terms of like uh, rounding out my team. So at this point in time, we have the Cure, we have the Pain, the Fury, and the Sorrow. And so. I had to try to look and see what the fear, you know, like I captured a sand shrew. I captured a sand shrew, evolved in the sand slash, I gave it the nickname of the fear. Because this thing, put essentially, is so fast and stuff, when you use the move slash, it guarantees a critical hit. It mm -hmm. knew slash, it knows earthquake, it knows rock slide. This thing is a fucking menace. So when that thing comes onto the field, you know it's gonna be <laughs> the nickname of the fear is definitely that. Now, the last Pokemon that ran it off my team, I caught a Snorlax. I gave him the nickname The End. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's really good. The reason why I gave him the nickname of The End is because of his moveset. He has the move Amnesia, which in Gen 1 Pokemon, you can increase the stats of his special attack by like two stages. Even more if you decide to be more bold and use it two twice in a row. And I, so I gave him... Not only Surf, but I gave him Fire Blast as well, along with having him learn Double Edge. So this dude is like a menace. He is a freaking overpowered son of a gun, you know. Yeah. He is styling and profiling so far mm. and so bad and so the Nature Boy is envious of that shit. But <laughs> that's just the thing. I go forth, I plow through the game in Pokemon uh, Blue. It took me 15 hours, close to about 15 hours to play through this game in and of itself. It, it quintessentially took me three days out of this week to go through, play through the entirety of Pokemon Blue, and then go through the Elite Four. I think, I, yeah, I posted it yesterday on Facebook, and that's just pretty much how I've been doing it. I've been doing my progress on Facebook. I've been going through the volumes of Poke Warriors Way. I've done like three volumes so far. And I'll tell you this, man, the fourth volume is coming up pretty soon because I'm starting a new game for the Pokemon games. I'll go into that in a little bit. But my Elite Four and the Champion stuff was interesting. I go through Lorelei, the first member of the Elite Four. I absolutely dominated Lorelei with the Fury. Jolteon was so fast, it was going through and hitting Thunderbolts. It was doing all this other crazy shit. Go through with, with uh, against Bruno. Bruno... Man, I dominated Bruno with the Cure, with my Blastoise and stuff, using Surf and this, that, only to switch it out to use the Sorrow, my Kadabra, and just freaking just annihilated with Psychic and all this stuff. Going to the third member, going to Agatha, and it's like, okay, let's do a little bit of mixture between three party members, you know, the Fury, the, like the Fury, the Sorrow, the Fear and stuff. Just try to cover the types, because Ghost types in that generation, it had Poison mixed in with Ghost. 
So this it's like girl is Exactly. Exactly Sorry. the point, man. <laughs> So, using Kadabra against a Gengar and a Haunter, yeah, that's no-brainer right there. They're part poison. They're super weak to it. So, I go forth with Lance. Lance is definitely the biggest pain in the ass of the Elite Four. The most challenging, I would say, among the Elite Four and the Champion. I mean, the Champion was fucking chump change before, like, what Lance is doing. He has three dragons. He's got his two Dragon Air. He's got his Dragonite. It came down with me having to use the End... No, uh, what was at the end? No, 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 no. I don't think it was at the end. It was something else. Actually, no. Actually, yes. <laughs> so uh, let me let me guess. So you got to the end. Yes. And then what the champion did was he turned his con he turned his Game Boy off. He set the, the clock two weeks ahead, and then turned the game back on, and the end died. Is that what happened? <laughs> no, no, that did That's not. It's a Metal Gear Solid three joke for you guys. And, oh, it's man, a I, super I, nerdy Metal Gear Solid 3 joke for people. Anyway, for people who got that fucking joke, I mean, I applaud you because Tyler and I, heavy Metal Gear Solid fans and stuff like that, yeah, that just hits home right there. But <laughs> <laughs> no, the end went forth, knocked out that freaking Dragonite. That last Dragonite, man, that was like at the freaking level 60 something, man. It was like, yeah. my Snorlax was like the late 40s. It was 48. That damn thing was able to go through and tank it and just go through and just kick it, and kick the shit out of it. And so here's the thing. When I went through the game originally, I had to decide upon the name of my rival. And because it's myself, I wanted to see, okay, what is the, my biggest rival in my life right now? I look forth and I see, you know what? It's fucking Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> so I gave my rival the nickname around. of Trump. And what's kind of funny about it is there's the last final battle. It's like, it's like okay, Colonel, it's like Gables is going to be facing off against Trump. <laughs> and so we have this epic battle right here, and I'm just absolutely steamrolling things. Like, get out his Pidgeot with my freaking Jolteon. It all comes down to... His I got a level 101 Dragonite. He's the greatest Dragonite of all time. He knows Surf. He knows Thunderbolt. He knows Pyro. He knows everything. He can also fly. He's really cool. He's great. He's good. It's great. It's wonderful. You fired. <laughs> Actually, you can think about all that and just apply it to his Venusaur. It's like, hey, my Venusaur, it's like, it's so great. It's all like level 60 something. It has like, it's not fake news. I mean, anybody tells you otherwise that this thing is not as good as fake news. Anyway. Yeah. This one is not from Russia. <laughs> it is not from Russia. It was not made in the lab. It's real. America first. America but America. anyway. Anyway, the, I ended up going through... I, The freaking Venusaur knocked out the cure, which kind of pissed me off right there. But I went forth and I used the pain, and the pain pretty much annihilated the Venusaur. I swept Trump, and it was just freaking awesome. So, nice. the final count was, I saw 129 Pokemon, and I own, I think I actually got like about 15 or 16 out of that <laughs> whole playthrough, and it's like a total of 15 hours. Nice. So, that was Pokemon Blue, that entirety of that playthrough. But now, I've actually started something else. I've started my playthrough of Pokemon Crystal. Now, with Pokemon Crystal, I had a set thing in mind. And this is sort of evolved for this Pokemon, like for this Poke Warriors way. It's going to be an entire playthrough of me doing Pokemon Crystal, but only having like one or two main Pokemon that are going to be fighting. All the rest are going to be applying for like HM stuff. So I got my Cyndaquil. I gave her the nickname of Frida. And the whole thing about this man, it's she's been steamrolling everything right at the moment. I'm five hours in Pokemon Crystal. She has already finally evolved at level 36. <laughs> she knows Thunder Punch, Attract, Fire Punch, and I have one more move I could possibly teach her. But I'll just say this right now, man. It's like, I am not even half... I'm Actually, I'm pretty much over halfway through the actual main campaign for Johto without the extra after game for Kanto stuff. And I could potentially beat this game, I would say, maybe in the next few days. If everything goes right. But, like I said before, there is one last game that uh, I did buy today that both of us have played, and that's Burnout Paradise Remastered. Yeah, boy! 
My God, I love this game. The girls are not very pretty. There's actually no girls at all. <laughs> well, that should be more exciting if there were girls inside there. But I digress. Burnout Paradise. What can I say much about it, man? I was like, that was the first Platinum I ever got for the PS4. I popped it into my PS... No, my PS4. PS3, actually. <laughs> that was around 2010. But anyway, it still feels like Burnout Paradise. It still plays like Burnout Paradise, and it is still a great game. Oh, yeah, it is. Soundtrack, still awesome. Dude, I'm surprised they kept a lot of the same soundtrack stuff. They kept the licensing all issues. the same songs. It's awesome. It's amazing. They got Epic's... Uh, uh, oh, God damn it. Uh, no, 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 no more? No, fuck it. I don't know. Anyways... It's all in there, and I just kind of play that on repeat with, along with Paradise City right now. <laughs> so good. And there's just the random things like Avril Lavigne. That's like the first thing I hear about yeah! Avril Lavigne the first time. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Great. I <laughs> forgot about friend. that. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. That's so random. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. You have though. these blazing rock tracks, and all of a sudden, you have Avril Lavigne. It's like, hey, hey, you, you, I yeah. can be your girlfriend. <laughs> what yeah, the fuck? It's pretty great. It's pretty awesome. I didn't mind it at all when that popped on. It was pretty funny. Uh, I thought it was yeah, pretty it was great. funny, too, and I had a good laugh when I was driving around. I was like, yep, I remember this now. Yeah. It is pretty funny, though. I was like, I spent, I didn't probably spend nearly as much as some other people, but uh, I spent a good chunk of time in Paradise City, and like it was funny playing it. I was like, I still remember a lot of this map. I do, like, too. It's like going through uh, the Paradise Field or going up into the, the mountains. And it's like, dude, like, everything's coming back to me now. Dude, you know what's funny? I've played that game for almost about like a half an hour, 45 minutes. And I've unlocked like about fucking 20% of the trophies already. <laughs> yeah, I've already got 14%. Yeah. Dude, dude, I went forth and I actually landed a freaking barrel roll off of one of those ramps at the right angle. I'm like, how did I fucking remember how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything like that. I just smashed a lot of gates. I do too. The burnout out sides and the whole super jumps. I remember doing the super jumps so much. And what's funny is I have not lost a beat when I was doing the one of the road rage maps. It's like the requirement was two. I did like about 16 eliminations. Yeah. I did the stunt run where it was like, get 5,000. I did 150,000. Oh, dude. You yeah. got 150,000? I did my first stunt run and I got like a 346,000. I'm like, what well. the fuck? Lotty freaking dog gables. Well, you have to God. do is you got to time like the little like boosts and stuff, you know, so that way it extends your little uh, multiplayer multiplier stuff. Yeah, I kept doing that, then I'd crash. I'm not very good at this game. Oh, and I remember how I used to play the game too, where it's like I adjusted the camera to where it's like a first person view. And, oh shit! And that's how I played it. That's how I played it. That's how I did with the Carson Inferno van. It was so you fast pray. that I would fucking crash every freaking couple of minutes. It was so fun. Uh, this is that's just the theme of this game, Burnout Paradise. This is the remastered version. There, I have hardly seen any type of like bad thing really about it yet. I've played it for like I said about thirty or forty minutes, but I, I remember almost everything about this game. Yeah, uh, I think I'll, I'll probably play a little bit more new. Uh, yeah, probably, probably forty-five minutes to an hour. Um, but yeah, no, same thing. Like I just said, like. I started playing. I'm like the the you, you get to the main menu and like Paradise City, Guns N' Roses starts playing. And like yeah, like I'm, I I grew up listening to like a lot of '80s uh, hair band stuff, and uh, I can't stand it anymore. Uh, it drives <laughs> me nuts. But uh, p this is like the one time where like I hear Guns N' Roses. And I'm like, fuck yeah, <laughs> okay. Other than uh, um, when you hear Guns N' Roses knocking on heaven door. Like, it's still one of my favorite songs of all time. Just because of Axl Rose. It's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> like, that's just the greatest sound effect. I don't know what that is, but it's like the greatest sound effect. Ooh, knock it off the head of Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But that's, that random sound effect is still, still amazing. Um, but yeah, no. It's like, like, it came on. I'm like, yeah. I just kind of want to, like, turn my TV up as loud as it can get right now. I know, right? Player Paradise City over and over again just drive around town and like wreck stuff <laughs> yeah it, it, like doing takedowns like doing some races uh and you take take guy out like oh yeah it still got still feels good decade later like this oh man yeah i still i get you know say i remember why now jeff christman this is his best game of the last generation oh yeah 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 it's up there it's like this i forgot about it when 
We did our G- Game of Generation show, which you which you can listen to on the Drunk Nerds Flashback. Yes, you uh, can. Episodes 23 and 24. I don't know why I remember that, but I do. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, spoiler, Burnout Out Paradise is not on there. Maybe you should have been. Yes, uh, it should But, yeah, been. no, I mean, it, it's, oh, man, like, I can't wait until we do, like, a gamer night with Talking Ship and get some people in there oh, and play that. Yes. Like, everybody's playing Talking Ship right now. Uh, it was cool when I got home. Like, it doesn't happen too often anymore. Like, maybe once or twice a year. Where you go on your friends list this generation, and you see like five or six people playing the same game. Yes. Uh, and like it just you you see it all the time back in like the 360 days when uh it's like Call of Duty or Halo or uh Gears or whatever the big game was that came out that day. Um, like everybody in your friends list was playing that game. Like you had no issues getting to a party or get playing or getting finding people to play that game with, and like you don't see that very much anymore. Um, and it was cool. Like I can't I, you know I got home from work. Uh, last night and I was just like oh, I'm going to play it and I played it for like 15 minutes but it was cool and I got on there and I was like I had nine friends that already played uh, Burnout Paradise uh, wow yeah. so I was just like like that's fucking sweet like this is like a this is a 10 year old game and I have all these like people that I can play this with there's probably more now like now Gables has got it yep uh, I can't yeah it's great like this might replace Rocket League for us Oh my Which, god, I hope so. I mean, we have not gamer nighted in a long time and I'm really yeah. getting kind of tired. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to replace Rocket League, don't get me wrong. But I'm ready for uh, I'm ready for some getting just it's been too long since we got some people together uh in general to play, but too long since I've I've got like three or four friends together like I used to back in the day. Oh my god. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say this with like with the like Rocket that. League and stuff like that, I constantly delete and have to re-download it because it's like Whenever I delete it, and stuff, I was like, oh, let's play some Rocket League. Like, oh, my fucking God. Damn, give me an hour. Dude, you got to get it again, though. You gotta, make sure you download it because we're, they're releasing uh, WWE cars here soon. What? Yeah. I hope there's a John Cena car. There's got to be a John Cena car. Oh, my fucking God. A John Cena Totes buying it. Oh, it, it, it better have some sort of, like, a horn or something like that. Dee, dee, dee. Yeah, I was going to say, when it does a turbo, it goes, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> or you just say, it's John Cena. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. What if yeah. Nicole happens? It's like, it's John Cena. Yes. I would laugh so hard if that car <sighs> actually did that. And, like, when, like, the like the, the effect that comes out of the... Uh, uh, of of the car when he does the turbo it's just like John Cena doing the you can't see me oh my god or or even better it's like all of a sudden it's like when the John Cena car scores a goal or something like that you just see this <laughs> yeah that'd be great <laughs> oh man why do we keep doing this to ourselves we get ourselves excited for things that are never gonna happen well you know what it's just so fun just like just imagining it too I mean hey John Cena give or take you know it's like I've had I you know what it's like I mean, I like John Cena as much as like some other people is, but just the thought of like just something ridiculous like that with John Cena and stuff—it just makes me happy. I don't know why; it just does. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking up Rocket League cards right now. WWE items coming to Rocket League this spring. Okay. Okay. Do we have any details? Because uh, they 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 had the thing like uh, last year where the Rocket League signed this big like advertising deal with them. Yes. Um. So Austin Creed does. Uh, up, up, uh, down, Woods. down, which is a yeah, good, he does. which is a good show, and I would recommend yes. people watching it because there is some good things going on there with uh, up, up, down, down. Uh, so I'm, I'm on the Rocket League website, and there's no details. Ah. Uh, this other than it's coming this spring. That was the article that came out a couple weeks ago. You gotta believe there's gonna be a car for the Undertaker, or probably for the Rock or Stone Cold. You know, I mean that's just a oh, given. Yeah. In my opinion, that'd be, that'd be sweet. Every time you score a goal, like the what's like the Austin car, it's just glass broke. Yes, God, we're getting like really nerdy right now with with yes. Rocket League and WWE. But man, or I, I, honestly, as long as the John Cena car thing happens, oh all the things God. we just said, I'm fine. Or like totally cool. The thing. Undertaker car scoring a goal, just a big old gong, just sounds. Yes, <laughs> yes, these are all good things. What if there's like a gold dust when every time you score a goal? What, <laughs> Sorry, my 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 uh my audio just spiked, but uh, no no no, it's that, gotta like, be gold dust, dust theme or something when it freaking like scores a goal, like do 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 do. Yeah, the shattered dreams. <laughs> the shattered dreams thing. Yeah. Oh my god, there's yeah. so much good stuff potential they can do with this. So many stupid things that they sh- they should do, but they probably won't do. And would it probably get uh, me playing freaking Rocket League for another twenty hours? I kid you not. Like, 
be really great if like there's a Triple H card, and every time someone scores a goal, like he uh, he stops the push. Um, <laughs> or better yet, when he scores a freaking goal, just a golden shovel appears. Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> These are like you thought that that oh, no. Milgram saw three uh, joke earlier was was like super nerdy. We just got even nerdier. Uh, we got like WWE nerd nerd. Hence, like that new level of nerd. Hence the name Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Yeah, we're definitely living up to it. I've been drinking some beers and also we're getting super nerdy about some shit this week. So uh, yeah, but anyways, we're out paradise, man. It's fucking Fun, great, dude. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, I, I am ready to put some more time into it. We'll have to uh, uh, get together it's, uh, sometime, like either tomorrow or sometime next weekend. We'll have to like plan a night and just play the shit out of that and get get everybody get together, have some drinks, and well, I'll tell you wreck, what, Tyler. Wreck shit. I'm gonna go yes. ahead. I'm gonna do a post on the Talking Ships little Facebook page. I'm gonna try to arrange like a Ooh. night. You can create an event on the Talking Ship uh, PlayStation uh, thing. Yes, I'm gonna do that too. But I'm going to create an event. I'm going to go ahead and post it on Facebook too, seeing if we can gather some enough interest. Okay. Possibly do it for maybe like later in the month, so that everyone has enough time to see. You know, like uh, maybe a couple weeks from now, maybe like another week from now. I don't know. I'll we'll just gaze and see what we can do. So Friday night, nine o'clock. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that does sound pretty fun. Ah. But yes, that's just still a work in progress, but we will definitely get something going. <laughs> Nine o'clock my time, not your time. Oh, like I'll, six I o'clock. I, yeah, that's seven o'clock. You're two hours behind me. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you do nine o'clock your time, I'm asleep. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I don't know. Anyways, oh, I, I forgot to mention on the show, I told you before the show. I also uh, picked up Gamefly. I got the I got an offer for like $1 for a, a month. And uh, so I'm getting Kirby Stars. Uh, Kirby Star Allies. So... Hopefully I'll be playing that next week. Um, it just shipped uh, yesterday, I think Thursday or Friday. So um, yeah, I'll should be getting that sometime mid next week, and I'll talk about it then. Also, dude, Detective Pikachu comes out Friday. I just remembered that. Holy crap, that's right. Interesting. That's gonna be. I don't know. I think I think that game's gonna be terrible, but I really want to play it. So. I don't know. We are just gonna have to see. You know, if it's yeah. actually good, I'm. I don't know. Maybe I'll actually play it. I don't I've already bought know, it, dude. so I hope it's good. But I really, actually, I, I kind of don't really care. I feel like either way, I'm going to enjoy this game. <laughs> it's going to be if it, even if it's terrible. Like I'm still probably going to find some enjoyment out of this game. I don't know. I'll just like close my eyes and like try to picture Danny DeVito as Pikachu <laughs> instead. It'd be so much better. Um, but you know what, Gables? We're kind of rambling lately, so I think we're going to wrap the show up now. All right. We've been, we've been all over the place. We're not even talking about what we've been playing anymore. We're just talking about fucking Danny DeVito and Rocket League. This is weird. We're, we're all delirious right now. We're all very tired. Uh, so <laughs> this has been a show for the week. Uh, I do want to actually, before we do the whole wrap-up thing, um, I officially re- released the, um, re-released the uh, remastered uh, the uh, last OG um, Drunk Nerds podcast uh, that you couldn't find on the feed uh, under that name. Uh, episode 61 for that came out uh, last Thursday. So uh, thank you for everybody that's been checking those out and downloading those, whether you're a new listener or you listen to them back in the day. It's when we listen to them. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me uh, to going back and listen to some of those. Gables, I think you should do the same because it's kind of funny. It's going back and like, one, you know, it's weird listening to yourself, but like, Listen to yourself five years ago, and it's like, man, that was really, like I can't believe I said that. Like, like the things I think now and the things I think I thought then, like a lot of things are completely different. Oh yeah, um, it, it's really funny. Like the, the original shows, where I, like I hated, I, I bash Nintendo constantly, and uh, now <laughs> I I'm, remember that. <laughs> now I'm you know the born again fan. So uh, I've been uh, Miyamoto uh, dunked me in a river. Uh, and now I am up in wash of my sins. You are reborn in the church of <laughs> yes. Nintendo. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty great. We, we, we meet uh, a few times a year, play cats and toad. It's pretty great. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, check, check all those out. It's, it was fun to, uh, like I said, to go back and listen to those, um, you know, being the one I edited that and also part of it. And, um, but, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I think I did. But next week, it will be the actual last 
of these. Um, there was an episode, episode 104, uh, under the Gen Gaming uh, uh, banner that was we recorded. It was an E3 show from 2015, um, but I just thought throw it out there. Um, part of the reason is like we did this was one to uh, I wanted to get all of the episodes out there again uh, yes. to be listened to. Well, I mean, really, that was that was really the only reason was like I have we have all these shows that were kind of lost to the to the Ethernet, uh, the internet, like there would be from the internet black hole, uh, and I had them on a laptop, and I'm just like, ah, we should throw these back out there. Um, it'd be cool to have them all on one feed again, but also for people that have been you know that blisters from the beginning, that are people that have been uh, jumped in somewhere in between or whatever, uh, give them a chance to listen to some of these shows. It's good and. Uh, so they're all going to be out there now. That's why episode 104 is going to be coming out. Um, just get it out there. I don't know. You know, it's, it's going to be kind of a weird show because it's the E3 show. But figured it's the only one that you, you wouldn't be able to find. So throw it out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it would be, be fun. There was actually a two-parter. For some reason, two part two got released, but part one was never released. I don't understand why. Huh. But that's just how it happened. Um, I will just say this. Uh, I was not the one controlling the feed back then. Uh, so it was not me. Don't blame me. Uh, I won't say who was controlling it back then, but you should all figure it out by... It wasn't Gables either. So you can figure it out by Process of Elimination. It was a former co one. <laughs> it yes. was just a belligerent Emperor Penguin. Just going through yes. this. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, accidentally yeah. switched the wrong switch. <laughs> yep, he was hitting the wrong switches. Um, so anyways, that will be out there next week. They'll come out next Thursday, and then that will officially be it for the... Um, for the all the uh, bringing back some of the old shows, uh, and then I can I can lower our lips and feed down so I can uh, save uh, ten bucks a month. There you go. So woohoo! I could buy uh, more beer with that. Um, but anyways, uh, speaking of rambling, I'm still rambling. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for listening. If you want to hear more from us, we have a uh, Facebook page and group, uh, Drunk Nerds Podcast or Drunk Nerds. I'm sorry. Uh, so like and join us on there. Twitter at Drunk Nerds Pod. Follow us on there. On uh, Twitch, we are Drunk Nerds Podcast. Just, uh, follow us uh, on there as well. Also, send us friend requests. We like friends. Friends are good. YouTube, Drunk Dash Nerds. Subscribe, please. Uh, and iTunes, uh, please subscribe. Leave us a five star review. Write us a little comment uh, on YouTube. And um, uh, iTunes is where the show um, goes up right away. Uh, you can also, I guess, Facebook and Twitter, uh, Twitter too. But if you want to listen to them on there, uh, please do. Uh, give us a thumbs up actually on YouTube. I forgot to mention that. Uh, really appreciate that. Leave a comment. Uh, yeah, check us out on all those places, please. And uh, once again, thank you for listening. I was host. I was Tyler, and I have been Colonel Gables. So until next week, everyone, have yourself a good week. Play yourself some fun games, and be sure to listen to a good old episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. We out, everyone. Boys.